If you've been watching me for a while, then you know that I have done a lot of things in my past that I hate. That I wish I could make go away, that I try to make go away by uh, deleting videos or untagging my Instagram things or literally doing whatever I can to pretend like those things didn't happen. Because yes, I apologize for a lot of them, but I'm 31, almost 32. Those apologies suck. I don't know who that person is anymore. Every apology video I've ever made has been a, from fear. It's, it's me sitting at home thinking the whole world hates me and crying and hyperventilating and then just turning on a webcam and just saying I'm sorry and then hoping people know I'm a good person and then it'll go away. And that is stupid. That is something that a child does, not something that a 31 year old uh, man does. That's not, that's not good. Right now is very much a time of wanting people to be accountable, wanting uh, punishment for people. And I agree. And that's why I'm making this video. I saw Jenna Marble's video and it really inspired me and felt like a sign from the universe that I want to do this. So this, this video is coming from a place of just wanting to own up to my shit, wanting to own up to everything I've done on the internet that has hurt people, that has added to a problem, that has not been handled well. Like I should have been punished for things. I feel like this moment right now is very necessary. I'm gonna apologize for a lot of things that I've done or said in this video. And if you don't accept the apology, that is 100% okay. And I think that's something that I, as I'm getting older now, I'm realizing it's like, you can apologize, but you can't expect the other person to just forgive you. Like that's, that's doesn't make any sense. So I think this video for me is more about just saying everything I wanna say and ways that I wanna help be a part of a change and not be a part of a problem, which is what I've been a part of. So I'm gonna start with all the racism that I put onto the internet as a adult, not a child. I was at least 20 when I started YouTube and I made the decision to play stereotypes of black people or Asian people or Mexicans or uh, pretty much every race, I made that decision. I said, oh, this is funny, and I put it on the internet. Now, years later, I look back at that, and, and I've talked about this before, but I, when I say I hate that person, I mean it in the most intense way possible. I hate that person so much. That person was filled with sadness, filled with anger about their own issues, uh, in the closet, constantly uh, projecting on others, just like, I don't know, just that, that person is someone who I don't like seeing. And I think that's why I've been avoiding this because I'm like, no, I already apologize. I don't wanna go back. I don't wanna see it again. I don't wanna see it. Uh, mute it on Twitter, uh, mute, untag it on my Instagram. Like, I just don't, I hate that person so fucking much. Okay, so, sorry. So first, let's start with blackface. Blackface was something that I did a lot. Like I did it a lot on my channel and there is no excuse for it. There's literally no excuse. I made a video six years ago talking about it and I gave excuses and I knew it was wrong and I knew I would never wanted to do it again, but I didn't do the work. I didn't actually look into the history of it and why it's so wrong and why people were so upset because my excuse, oh, I was, I was just being funny. I, I love black people. I'm not racist. I was trying to be funny. Like I, all of that is stupid and wrong. And I put that onto the internet as an adult. And that is insane. I'm so sorry. I am so sorry to anybody that saw that and that also saw that people were lifting me up and were saying, you're so funny, Shane. Oh my God, you're so funny. Like, I, I can't even put myself in that head. I can't even imagine what it would be like to be black and to see this white fucking guy do blackface and the whole internet at that time being like, LOL, that's insane. And I am so sorry. I don't know how to even fully apologize because it almost, it seems like something that is uh, irredeemable or I don't know the right word, but it's something that I shouldn't even be able to get out of. I should lose everything for that. I can tell you this, I don't have hate for any race or any people with weight issues or, or any of that special needs. I don't have hate in my heart for anyone. 
but it doesn't make up for the fact that I made jokes about everyone. And some of the jokes were way too far. And I think this year specifically really changed me as a person. And I started seeing black people who I know, who I'm friends with, who I've known for a long time. I'm seeing them openly talking about on their Instagram or Twitter, the years of anger they've had about racist jokes, about blackface, about, you know, microaggressions, everything that they've gone through. And I felt like the biggest piece of shit in the entire world. I felt awful. And the biggest problem with me doing that and posting it on the internet was it made young people at the time who were watching me think it was okay. And, and that, that's the craziest part. It's like, I've had people tell me, well, I used to watch your videos when I was a kid and yeah, I never saw anything wrong with that. And that is scary because it made me realize, oh my God, I have been a part of such a huge problem and I have just been avoiding it. And that's wrong. So I'm so sorry. I'm sorry that I added to the normalization of blackface or the normalization of saying the N-word. That's another thing. I mean, and, and my justification at the time for that was, oh, well, it was, you know, I was playing a character and it was in comedy and my black friend was there and, you know, that makes it okay. No, it's not okay. And it's not a funny word, especially for a white person to say. Me as a white person wearing a wig and playing a character and doing stereotypes and then saying the N-word is something that I should have probably lost my career for at the time. And there's no amount of apologizing that can take it away and take away the impact it had and take away the amount of people that have been hurt by that or have felt like I, I was just oh, another white guy who can get away with everything. When I really looked into the history of blackface, I looked into it years ago and it obviously disgusted me, made me sick, I felt awful. But even at that time, I still was being ignorant and I was saying in my head, well, but I didn't do that. You know, I was playing Wendy Williams or I was playing a character. That uh, justification, that is wrong. I mean, I've watched so many videos on the history of blackface and how it was created to make fun of black people, to make them feel less than. And the fact that I, in, in some way, was a part of that, like the fact that the word blackface now will forever be attached to me, that's the level at which I have been lately. Just feeling very awful about myself, about what I did, about the jokes I've made, about the videos I've made. I'm wanting to disassociate from that person, but I can't. Now there was one person who really tried to get through to me for a long time and her name is Jessica Lee and probably s seven years ago, she was, she's a YouTuber and she tweeted me and we got into fights back and forth and my audience at the time was saying racist things to her and it was so toxic and I'm so sorry and it's so gross and there's no amount of apologizing for it and I think I was taking everything as an attack, which is so stupid. Like looking back, that is stupid. I was taking it as an attack. Like, I'm not racist, leave me alone, I'm not racist. And you know, it's like, okay, but look what you're making, Shane. Like that, I don't know how I didn't see that. That is scary and I'm sorry. But one of my biggest problems was thinking that criticism is being attacked. Um, oh, somebody's telling me that I did something wrong. I'm gonna go on the defensive. And that's not a good way to live and it's not a good way to grow and change and actually help people. So speaking of Francesca, there is something on Twitter right now that people are sharing and I got a text about it today and my heart completely broke. And it was from my podcast from five years ago. Now in the clip, I am talking about, the segment was about murder fantasies. Like, oh, is there somebody that you really hate or you're mad at and, you know, have you ever fantasized about murdering them and how would you do it? Stupid, gross, awful, something I would never talk about now. That podcast is a, the, a source of so much awful shit for me, so many regrets for me. And I loved a lot of those moments, but a lot of them were like, what do we do to make it crazier? How do we make things more insane? Oh, how do we make it more shocking? Like Howard Stern? Like it just got to a point where I'm happy it ended because I wasn't even myself. I don't even know who I was at that point. Anyways, so in the segment, I started talking about, you know, uh, figuratively murdering someone and it was insane and gross. Now she believes, and a lot of people believe, that I was talking about her. And I can say, if I had a Bible, I would put my hand on it. I can say without a doubt, 
hand on a Bible, that was not about Francesca Lee. That was about another woman. Not that it makes it okay, because it doesn't. Talking about anybody like that is crazy, especially a woman. But it was about a white woman. And the ironic part is, that woman was just trying to get through to me too. Like, she was just trying to explain to me why what I was making on the internet was hurting people. It was at a time when I was making a movie and I was constantly on the defensive. I felt attacked all the time, which is stupid. I shouldn't have felt like that. And it got so bad that, I don't know, it almost made me want to make the jokes crazier to make everything crazier, almost like as a, you know, screw you, I'm just gonna make it crazier. And that's one reason it's hard for me to watch that movie because I would never make a movie like that now, uh, ever in my whole life. There were so many offensive jokes in it that were so cheap and shitty and stupid. And there was a woman involved who was constantly giving me criticism and telling me that I needed to, to stop making so many offensive jokes. And the reason I was so upset wasn't just because of that. There's so many other reasons. I mean, this this person really tried to, I don't know, there, there was a lot. They tried to ruin my relationship. They, it was, it was, it was a lot. I had a lot of anger for this person. So that anger is gone, by the way, it's all gone and I'm so sorry to her, and I'm sorry to Francesca, and I should have never talked about anybody like that ever. And that's the other thing, the podcast, I mean, there's so many clips that people are bringing up. So there's a clip that has been going around again, a few years ago is when it came out, and they cut out all the parts where I said, you know, pedophilia is disgusting, and they put it together, and it made it seem like I was, you know, talking about how it's normal. So gross, I would never say that, but also, I shouldn't have been joking about it anyways, which is my problem, my fault. So I'm sorry if you heard that. There's also other ones too. I mean, and that's something I have addressed before, but my childhood, my past, I've had a lot of pain. I've had a lot of bad things happen to me. I've had a lot of issues with my family and I took that pain and I turned it into jokes. And I think instead of joking about them so much, I probably should have just went to therapy earlier and talked about them. I swear on my life, I am not somebody who would ever talk about a child, like in seriousness, I would never talk about a child in any way that was inappropriate. That is disgusting, that is gross, it is not something I would ever do. It is something I did for shock value or because I thought it was funny or like, oh my God, my child molester character or whatever. It's all gross and I promise that is not real. That is not me. Have I done sketches where kids were saying crazy things? Yes. Do I regret it? Yes. Even I saw a vlog clip of me and my cousin who was, I don't know, probably 12 or 13 at the time. And we were, you know, I was doing the birds and the bees talk. That dumb, sh gross shit. And I remember a few years ago, I reached out to her mom, my aunt, and I was like, I'm so sorry. Oh my God, I can't believe I did this. Like, this is insane. I can't believe I talked to, you know, my cousin like that. And, you know, she was like, oh my God, we know, we know. It's okay. It was funny. Like, we all thought it was funny. Like, th that's just how our family is. So I kind of took that as like, okay, well, then I don't need to apologize for it. But I do because I posted it on the internet for everyone, not just my family. That wasn't, I posted like a f stupid, weird family moment for everyone. I'm so sorry that I just was so thoughtless with things I was posting for so many years. I just, I don't know. I just wasn't, I wasn't thinking. I thought, I thought, oh, I'm in a weird category where I can say whatever I want. And I did. And now it's the biggest regret of my entire life. All of it. Now, even though my apologies in the past for all of these things have not been good enough, they've not been thought out, they've been uh, very fear-based, they've been not, not good at all. I do wanna say, since I've apologized for those things in the past, I have made a lot of changes in my life, changes in just every, every, every facet of me has changed. I'm not just saying it, I'm not just saying, oh, I'm gonna stop doing that, guys. I did stop doing that. I stopped doing that stuff years ago, I don't use any racial slurs in my life. I've never used a racial slur in anger ever in my life. That is not me, that has never been me. I am not a hateful person. I am somebody who took jokes too far and was really, really, really stupid and um, inappropriate. So all of those apologies, if you accept them, thank you. If you don't, I 100% understand because there was a lot and a lot of that is stuff that you probably will never forgive me for. And maybe you didn't know about all those old videos. I 100% understand. I'm willing to lose everything. At this point, realizing how many people I've hurt or how many people I've inspired to say awful things or, or do anything awful, like to finally just own up to all of this and be accountable is worth losing everything to me. And I am not saying that as like a lie or 
for sympathy, I'm being honest. I want to spend the rest of my life doing things that I love with my heart, that I'm excited about, and things that aren't hurting anyone, aren't offending anyone, and I want to learn more. And I don't want to be someone who's afraid of my past. So thank you for hearing me out on all of those issues. I promise I'm going to do better to even more so uh, educate myself, put more people uh, on my channel that aren't just white YouTubers in trouble. Like that, I'm totally aware of how that looks. Somebody pointed that out to me a couple years ago and I got really defensive over it. And now I'm looking back going, no, they're right. They're right. If you look at my channel, it's a bunch of white people and talking about their problems. And I love a lot of those videos and I'm so proud of those videos, but you're right. I need to open up what I'm doing for everyone. So last week I went on Twitter and it had been about two weeks of me getting people constantly saying, address it, address it, address it, talking about the James and Tati situation. I was just gonna ignore it. And then when I started hearing, oh, Shane mastermind, the whole thing, it didn't sit well with me because it's not true. So when I finally addressed it, I wrote this Twitter note, which was such a mistake. I wrote it in, I had a restock for the conspiracy collection and I woke up and I felt really weird. Like we had been pushing the restock for so long that we finally had to do it. And when I woke up and it was out, I just felt so weird. I felt so guilty. I didn't want to, I couldn't enjoy it. I didn't want to enjoy this restock when there's something that I haven't addressed that people are really, really upset at me for it. So I sat down and I wrote that essay, which I wrote it to be funny. It didn't come across that way. It came across very angry which it was, but it was also supposed to be funny. It just was a huge miss in every single way. So the part of the Twitter note that I regret more than anything in my life was the part where I said that James deserved a slice of humble pie the size of the Empire State Building. I only want to talk about this situation with love because I feel like that note had so much anger in it. It was just not good. And so I'm going to come at this situation by first apologizing. I'm sorry, James. I'm really sorry. First of all, Nobody deserves what happened. Nobody. The whole internet ganging up on someone. Nobody deserved that. And who am I to say that somebody needs to be humbled? Me. Like, who am I to say that? I literally have put so much hate onto the internet over my last 15 years of YouTube world. Like, I have put so much shit and I'm sitting here like, well, because I changed and because I'm uh, nice and this and that, like, yeah, you need to be humbled. It's like, that sucks. I hate that. That was so immature and gross and I'm so sorry. And I know a lot of people were saying that, well, why did you say you're leaving the beauty community? You were never in it. And you're right. I don't know why I said that. That was stupid. I was never in the beauty world because a lot of the beauty people that I watch, and I'm not just saying that, I think a lot of people think I'm lying when I say I really love the makeup world and I'm really invested in it. I'm not lying. For the last year, I've been watching beauty channels every day. My whole homepage is just beauty channels and it's smaller ones. So to know that I hurt those people who are problematic and who just love makeup and who have been working their ass off for years, for me to shit on that, I am so sorry. Also, I'm aware of how hypocritical it is for me to say I'm above this tea and drama channels and drama and I'm not like that and that is so stupid. It's so dumb. Uh, at that moment, I was so upset with certain things. It was just me being upset. And it is hypocritical. I mean, I watch drama videos, but when it's about me, oh, now it's a problem. Like, and I'm aware of how hypocritical that is, and I'm so sorry. This is a huge one. I'm aware that I hold my friends or people I care about to a uh, lower standard than I hold other people. That's wrong, and I'm so sorry. I think I get attached to people who have a heart and maybe it's covered in a lot of stuff and maybe they have a lot of issues, but I almost feel like I am attracted to other broken people who have issues and I wanna help them, I wanna fix them or I wanna help people see a better side of them and I'm aware that I'm friends with some people that you know, have done some bad things on the internet and I don't condone it and I don't co-sign it and that is um, something that I've always addressed with them privately. I'm ready to, to, to own up to this stuff and I'm ready to hopefully show you guys that it's okay to admit when you're wrong. It's okay to uh, be upset at your past self for making mistakes, but also it's okay if people don't want to accept your apology or if people um, don't want to support you anymore. That's okay too. And I understand if you watching this video right now feel that way, please like, I don't ever want you to feel like I'm forcing you to forgive me. That is not what I want to do.
and I promise that I'm gonna show you through my actions, and I promise that whatever I do next will be putting good into the world, and it won't be putting hate or drama or anything negative, and um, I'm gonna stick by that. So thank you for watching this. If you watched the whole thing, thank you so much. And I hope that you learned some lessons from me, especially if you're young. I hope you learned a lot of lessons from uh, everything that I have done, put out into the world, mistakes I've made. I hope that you can see that and know that it's never too late to address it and to change. <laughs>